Hey, it's Thomas here, and today we're doing a quick review on Neptune Systems ATK V2. And no, you don't need an Apex to use this. If you're looking for a safe auto top off solution with multiple layers of protection from overfilling, a pump capable of pushing water up to 14 feet vertically that takes just minutes to set up and can even send you push notifications when paired up with an Apex, then check out the ATK V2. It actually also has two add-ons you can get to add additional layers of safety, but I'll talk about those in a bit. Our aquariums experience a fairly rapid amount of evaporation. This is mostly due to the amount of surface agitation our pumps create and the fact that many reefers prefer not to use a glass or polycarbonate top over the reef as it can cut down quite significantly on light penetration. That means we need to consistently top off our tanks with fresh RDI water to prevent the concentration of salt and other elements from rising up as the water evaporates. Long story short, while topping off the tank daily by hand is doable, it's tedious, and allows for unnecessary swings that could be tightened up with an automatic top off. The Neptune Systems ATK V2 is arguably the most advanced ATO out there. It has multiple fail safes, requires no programming, can pump water up to 14 feet high, making it a versatile option for reefers with a reservoir that's further from the tank. And it can also run standalone without an apex and as easy as pie to set up, plug and play. Stick it at the water level you want to maintain, and done. I'll also go over some of the extra features you can unlock when you hook it up to your Apex, but first let's get it out of the box. In the box, you'll find the FMM module, the magnetic mount with two optical sensors and a mechanical float valve, the V2 PMUP utility pump, the Push Connect 3 8 to quarter inch adapter, the Push Connect siphon brake, just over 13 feet or four meters of RO tubing, a six foot Aquabus cable, the power adapter, and the mounting screws. There is very little actual assembly and the FMM module is pre-programmed so it's gonna know exactly what to do when everything gets plugged in. Plus they give you this get started card that walks you through everything. First, install the Push Connect 3 8 to quarter inch adapter onto the pump. Then insert the included RO tubing into the other end of the adapter. Next, insert the other end of the tubing into the push fitting on the float valve. Then mount the magnetic water level assembly in your sump with the water level you want to maintain reaching the middle of the bottom optical sensor. Next, place the pump into your reservoir, then just before the top of the reservoir, cut the tubing and install the included siphon brake. After that, using the included bracket and screws, mount the FMM module in a dry location, safe from splashes and excess humidity. Lastly, insert the cables. Cable one goes to port one, two to port two, the pump goes to the ACC port, and the adapter to the PWR or power port. The status light on the FMM will be blue under regular operation. It'll change to green when water is being pumped or to red if there's an error or fault while also sounding an alarm to let you know. Speaking of the alarm, the ATK V2 has a lot of redundancy built in to help protect not only your inhabitants, but also your home from any accidental overfilling. Here's a breakdown of how it works. The first optical sensor will detect when the water level has dropped, activate the pump, and fill the sump until the water reaches that first optical sensor again. If that sensor fails, the water level keeps rising and trips the second optical sensor, which will shut off the pump and sound an alarm to let you know there was a failure. If that second sensor fails, then the IQ fill programming that has been keeping track of your average fill times will only allow the pump to run for so long before shutting it off and sounding the alarm to let you know that somehow both of the previous sensors failed. If somehow that IQ fill programming also fails, the last built-in protection is a good old fashioned mechanical flow valve that will plug the line preventing water from freely flowing into the sump. So if all that isn't quite enough and you'd like to add extra redundancy, like I mentioned earlier, there are two accessories you can add onto your ATK V2, even if you're running it standalone without an Apex. You'll notice there are two extra ports on the FMM. On port number three, you can add a leak detection sensor and place it near your sump, inside or beside the aquarium stand or anywhere near the aquarium water's likely to collect. And if for any reason at all, whether it's an ATO failure or a leak from some other piece of equipment, if water touches this sensor, it'll shut off or prevent the ATO pump from running while also sounding an alarm to let you know. On port number four, you can add an extra standalone optical sensor and mount it inside of your ATO reservoir just above the pump intake. If you forget to fill up the reservoir, the sensor will stop the ATO from running the pump and give you that alarm to let you know. 
Like I mentioned earlier, you don't need an Apex to be able to run the ATKV2, but if you have an Apex or decide to get one down the line, you can link your ATK with the Aquabus cable and it will then be able to send you push notifications to your smart device alongside the Audible alarm, which is really handy if you aren't home and a failure occurs. It also gives you the ability to use custom coding to change how the ATK operates to better suit the needs of your reef through Apex Fusion. I've taken a look at a few of the more common custom codes that savvy Apex users are implementing with their ATK, and I'm pretty intrigued. I'm also considering using the SV1 solenoid instead of the included PMUP for running my RODI system directly to the tank rather than having a reservoir to refill, although that comes with its own set of challenges, a bunch of which Ryan and Randy actually cover in their top 20 ATO mistakes video, which you can check out right there. Go get those tips and tricks, figure out what you should and shouldn't be doing with your ATO, save yourself the headache and heartache and the potential mess, and learn from the rest of us. It's better if you don't make this, if you know the mistake before it happens, you won't have to make it.